Okay. What's the name? Welcome everybody. Uh, so we're going to get straight into it. Uh, today we really just want to test your knowledge of closure and each other's knowledge of closure. Uh, there's going to be eight puzzles we're going to show you. Uh, so let's get straight in. And of course, do you want to? <laughs> Decided to start. Uh, at least I've got the laser pointer. Uh, okay, Renzo. Uh, here, here's a problem for you. What do you think this is going to evaluate? Oh man. Ah. Uh, mm, like at the end of the day, like this. Okay. What does this evaluate to? Um, so we got a uh, first. Uh, you got a typo there with two single quotes, or is? is no, there's definitely two quotes. There. Oh. Oh. All right. Um, so I know this, the, 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 the single quote is going to quote uh, the expression that comes after. So hello is quoted is a symbol. And the other symbol is quoting what is in that. Uh, and the first is like extracting something from that. Um, now should you have any? Shall I show you some options? Let's look at some options. Oh, yeah. Nope. It's not oh, well. Forgot about that. <laughs> OK, so. You say it's going to print the first quote, the first single quote, oh, because you say you're just taking the first of that three things, and that's going to be the first quote. Or option number two, the symbol quote, so just printing quote. Or number three, the first letter of hello as a char. Oh, backslash H. Interesting. Oh, maybe number four, the first letter of hello, but as a string. Because maybe, I don't know, first is making like hello into a sequence or not. So, depending. Uh, so, well, I'm going to guess. Yeah, I'm going to push you. My... You pick one, Renzo. Yeah. What do you pick? Um, I'm going to pick number three, thinking that it might transform that into a sequence and get the first. Number three? Letter. Okay, cool. Uh, let, let's go to the audience. Uh, who, who Put your hand up if you think number one. Mm -hmm. Number two? Oh, man. Ooh. Impressive. Uh, three. Just me. No, uh, Renzo's on his own. Uh, and four. Cool, yeah, there's a few okay. people there. Okay, let's reveal the answer. All right. I don't think I'll be able to do it. And Two. Yes, okay, so the majority awesome. of people uh, uh, got that correct. This was an easy start. Wait. Wait. <laughs> okay, now, uh, so would someone like to tell me why they think uh, number two? And you get a T-shirt for this, so who would like to tell me why they thought number two. Sure. Um, hello because of the sequence, the, uh, uh, the basic expression that sounds good, good, and then uh, because uh, the hello is good. Yeah, sure. It makes the first uh, part of the expression which is good. Yeah, yeah sure. That's okay. Uh, that, that's that's close enough for me. Here, yeah, let's a T-shirt. If this don't, if they don't fit, then just come see us afterwards, and we can. Ooh, nice catch. All right. Well, okay. Let's let's find out the reason why there. So yeah, uh, we all know that the single quote there is a reader macro, uh, which literally just expands to uh, the function quote. So you can see here, single quote equals the function quote, and those things are equal. Uh, so, yeah, now what happens when you quote a quote? Well, that means you're just returning this as an unevaluated expression. And then, uh, so, yeah, if we look at this, what's the type of this thing? It's a persistent list. And then we all know when you get the first thing out of a persistent list, you actually just get the symbol. So, uh, yeah, that's the answer. Uh, so, yeah, what do, what do we take away from this? Well, we all know this one, code is data, or maybe data is code. So uh, it could be either or there. Uh, and yeah, unevaluated expressions are just lists. All right, so you think you're smart. So what about this one? Right, OK. I can see, yeah, there's a, we're calling, there's a bit of Java interop going on here. So we're calling the dot compare method uh, on an operator, uh, which is a bit weird. Uh, so. If I was just going to take that as the operator, I would say that one is not less than one. So I would probably say, yeah, OK. I'll uh, show th you th there's my uh, <laughs> false. OK, I know I'm probably going to be wrong with this, but OK, let's look through this. The number zero, 
Uh, yep, doesn't make much sense to me there. Illegal argument exception, no matching found for compare. Right, okay, possibly. I, it did, did, did fool me there. I didn't really know if that had a compare method, so possibly three. Number one, no, I, I, it's out of one or three. I'm gonna go one, false. I'm gonna go one. So what do you think in the audience here? So who thinks it's number one? It's gonna bring false. Oh wow. No one wants to agree with me. No, okay. very sure You're about sure. Okay. So who thinks it's gonna print number two, number number zero? Gonna ooh, probably less than half or close to that. Number three, it's throwing exception. A quarter, like twenty five percent, and finally number one. It's gonna bring the number one. Got like two hands over there. All right. Brave. This is a little more difficult, I can see, right? They are not all polarized to the same answer. So the good answer is number two, the number zero. So yeah, there were a few votes mm -hmm. for that. So still very good, still very good. So anybody who answered number two wants to give it a try? Um, I just saw his hands first, but. Uh huh. Ah, yeah, it's close. But you we get, get the T-shirt anyway. for that anyway. Yeah, here you go. Oh. <laughs> uh, <yeah. laughs> so the reasoning is. The, the first part was good. There's something else going on, because if, if we follow your reasoning, then uh, you, you're thinking they are returning something that is the same, because zero in a comparator is equality, right? But what is equal there? One and one? But is, le is greater than, less than? Oh, wow, well, there's something wacky going on. Let's, let's have a look. So we, we need to go a little deep into some of these things, but uh, just to understand the concepts. But that was good. So. Um, if you look at what happens at every closure function in the standard library when you disassemble it, or even if you look at the source code, you'll see that they're going to uh, extend an abstract class that's called RESTFN. RESTFN extends another abstract class that's called A function. And this A function uh, provides a few concrete methods to each of the standard library functions. And one of them is the comparable interface. So each of the closure uh, uh, function of the standard library will get a compare method that you can invoke, as you've seen. I'm not suggesting you to do that, but you can invoke that. Um, if you then go through the logic for this specific, so you, you go through the first line, second line of this uh, method, how it is implemented, you'll see that it's invoking the actual operator there. So one is different from one, so it is equal to one, so it's returning false. Uh, if it's an install of a boolean, which is the case, we enter here, this block. Uh, boolean cast is just transforming whatever is passed in into a boolean, true or false. So we're not, uh, we're staying as a false. We're going down there, again, boolean cast. Uh, it's a false, so it's not getting that. It's going down here. It's a false because we are invoking it again and we're getting a zero. So it's... Yeah, a very convoluted way to find out why it is returning a zero, but it's returning a zero. So, take a wave. Mm -hmm. um, we learned that functions, all the functions in Clojure are comparators, but there's a, a, a reason for that. So it's a kind of a hack in the compiler. And the reason is you can use some of those uh, oper functions as um, operators or comparators for things like sort. So that is the correct way to use them. And you, if you don't know, if you sort a collection, you can pass a comparator in, and you can sort it in reverse order by passing greater than instead of less than. So that is why it's working, because it's a comparator, and it's got the, com the comparable thing in it. Cool, okay. Well, I've got nice. another one for you, Renzo. You'll have to click it for me. Yeah. Uh, right, okay, <laughs> this, one's, uh, this one's simple. Uh, and yes, I promise you this is closure and not Perl. Uh, Okay, it's very terse, yeah. Um, okay, so it looks like a function literal there that is creating a lambda, and it contains percent sign that I usually see with these kind of things. But 21, 
or two in one. Mm -hmm. Looks a little bit odd. How about we'll, we'll show you some options? I think you're on the right ballpark. Okay, so it returns a number in parentheses, 21. Hmm, hmm, unlikely, I think. Uh, something like blah, 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 like a function signature as an object, like that is the, when the class is generated things, that you, you see the, those kind of strings. Or it doesn't compile, it throws an exception, oh, maybe. Or it creates a set with the symbol 21 in it. Um, I don't think there's any set here. So I'm going to go for number two. OK, uh, let's, let's go to the audience. Uh, how, do you, how well do you know your Perl? Uh, OK, who thinks number one? No one? No one? Not any? OK, number two, function definition. Oh, Solid answer. Thank you, okay. guys. Thank you, Could guys. be a curveball that we're throwing in there. Who knows? Uh, it doesn't compile. It throws an exception. Ooh, OK. A few. Yeah, a few people. Uh, and it creates a set. Any fours? Ooh, we got one. Yeah, a couple. Uh, great. Uh, OK, so yeah, the correct answer. Let's hit it. It doesn't compile. Throws an exception. Oh, man. Yeah. Uh, does anyone want to have a guess at why that's the case? Yep, sure. Because uh, it refers to the exception Yep. And you can only have 20. Yeah, bang on. Uh, OK, let's, uh, let's walk through that. Congratulations. Oh. Yeah, let's look, let's look at that. Everyone. Thank you. There are some definitely smart people in the room, which is great. Uh, yeah, so let's walk through that. Of course, the, uh, we've got the anonymous function reader macro there, uh, which really just expands to your function. Uh, we all know that arguments are accessed by the percent sign there. So yeah, when we do a percent two, you're effectively, you're creating a function that expects two arguments. It just so happens that we're only using one of them. Um, so, uh, and yeah. So in, in Clojure, if you were to try and write a function like this with 21 arguments, uh, it throws a, an exception. So yeah, you can only have 20. Uh, and, and that's because uh, when, that, uh, when parsing that um, function in the fn method class, it's basically checking the, the number of arguments. And yeah, there's a, a max positional arity uh, constant there, which says there's only 20 arguments allowed. If you... Uh, want to look at the code for that, look in uh, the compiler Java line 5393. Um, and this is a bit of a bonus. Uh, it actually, this does work in CLJS, in ClojureScript. In fact, you can pretty much, I tried it with 50. I don't know how far it goes up. If, does anyone know if, if there's a limit to ClojureScript? Probably no? going, it's going into like an out of memory with a list along like uh, yeah. millions. So takeaways. You got me. You got me. <laughs> uh, yeah, so yeah, maximum of 20 arguments on the JVM. Uh, so a, a bigger, bigger takeaway from this is if you have a function that's expecting more than 20 arguments, then I would probably be rethinking uh, your function design. And maybe you're missing some type of encapsulation there. Nice. So let's see if you can understand what happens here. It has to do with predictability oh. of map literals yeah. that we heard this morning. So this is a bit of a throwdown. Uh, predictability of map literals. Well, right, OK, so yeah, definitely we're creating a map here. I can see that. Um, and interestingly, the keys of functions are returning some random integers, and the values are A and B. Um, all right, yeah, give me some options. Uh, creates a map with two integer keys. Yep, uh, I can see that. Does not compile integer bigger than integer max value. Ah, OK. Uh, that does look suspiciously big uh, beyond max int value. Uh, so that's possibly an option. Does not compile. You cannot use numbers as keys. No. Uh, does not compile it through as a duplicate key exception. Well. Possibly, maybe at runtime, if you had the two numbers just happen to match, perhaps. But um, 
Huh. And I think this would be a runtime exception too, number two. I'm gonna go with one. The, the, I'm gonna say it creates a map with two integer keys. All right, all right. So let's hear in the audience what you think. Who will go for number one? Show of hands. So map with two Thank integers. Thank you, Bit all of right. validation. Who would go for number two? Does not compile for that reason, so the integer is too big. A few, like five or five more or less. And who would go for does not compile because you cannot have numbers as keys. We have a, like a very, <laughs> only one. Uh, instead, does not compile, it throws duplicate key exception. It's, it's <laughs> split, the, 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 the audience yeah, seems no, I split. Think the majority is going for number four, I think. I think I might be onto a winner here. What All right, so are you ready? And is <sighs> number four, congratulations. Right into Got me. View, you I got think. me. Right? Yeah, yeah, it's a very tough audience, <laughs> this one. Um, all right, so anyone wants to try to give it a go? <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> James is yours. <laughs> uh, I feel, feel like I should say, because yeah. usually I made uh, an <laughs> error or. Oh, your claim is valid, it's predictable, it's going to do it every time. And that's correct. So let's look a little bit in more well details. Done. Yeah, well done. Well done. Well done, James. And thanks for like, staying at the joke. <laughs> so yes, li reader literals uh, follow um, uh, a slightly different path in the like, overall compilation process. They go through the reader first. And there they have specialized constructors, basically. So uh, hash map literals is one of those. Um, and the way it is implemented, we're not interested in all the things above, but just that piece at the, at the bottom there is it's going to create a persistent list for what is inside the map, if it is a list or numbers and so on. And it's going to create at the end of that, the implementation of a hash map, and which is calling into RT, uh, one of the class in the closure uh, source. And RT is, calling into persistent array, mash implement, uh, array map implementation uh, that is preventing the creation of a map with keys that are the same. And at that point in the compilation or evaluation process, um, the rand int of some number is still uh, seen as a list. As you can see there is more or less what the, com the, the uh, compiler would see at that point. It would see that there are two lists that are the same, so that are the same key and so it's not letting it through. And there was a good hint uh, also for the fact that that is beyond max end, but is not arrived at the point to evaluate that number, and so it's not going to throw exception, but if you take that list and try to evaluate, it's gonna throw exception uh, beyond uh, max value. Um, all right, all right, so what do we take away? Um, there is a pretty good evaluation rule in Clojure, which is we go inner to outer in the inner forms to outer forms, and left to right to evaluate. But there are exceptions when the reader macros are involved. So just be aware of that. Good one. Uh, well, well done, James. I think the, smack, the smackdown definitely this, went, this round to James. Well done. <laughs> uh, right. Okay. Renzo, another one for you. Uh, I think we could probably trick you with this one. What do you think? Uh, mm, so let's see. We are defining a var um, called expr that is taking an unevaluated list plus one one. Okay, we know what single quote is. And then we are taking this list and we are saying apply, so try to invoke it, the first of the list onto the rest of the list. So. Yeah, let's see, see some let's options. see some options. Let's see some options. So number one, a legal argument exception. Don't know how to create ISEC from a Java lang log. Um, perhaps let's try to invoke the number instead of the function. I don't know. Uh, it's printing the symbol plus. Um, I don't know. Maybe. Um, like we've seen before, right? And. Uh, Number three, the number two, so it's evaluating the, the, the thing. 
Or number four, the number one. Huh. Hmm. I would try to go for maybe the obvious one that is printing the number two and is actually executing the function. Went for the obvious choice. Okay, let's see uh, what the crowd thinks. Uh, number one, who, who thinks would the answer be number one? Sure, yeah. A couple there. Number two returns the symbol plus. Yeah, someone in the back there. The number two, the standard, yeah, adds the two numbers together. Yeah, seems obvious, doesn't it? And the number one. Yeah, a few people think number one too. That's okay, it was a good spread. Okay, I think we've, uh, we've got, got some bases covered. All right, let's see the answer. Number and one. And the number one is. Yes. How it is possible. Now, who is brave enough to tell me why? Sure. Perfect. Gee, I, uh, well done. I think. That was almost word for word verbatim what we're about to show you. Uh, so, yes, I, I, I think I can even skip over this. It was so close. <laughs> the first one is a symbol, in fact. Well done. Uh, and then the next one so, symbols are functions that look themselves up. Uh, but you need to pass in a collection as the argument, so we can see here, looks up plot one. Uh, but if it's not a collection, uh, when the case of number one, so we do apply, uh, that's returning nil. Uh, and we also have probably seen that you can apply, you can add a third argument to that, which is, Renzo, do you want to, oh, click yeah, sorry. the thing. And, oops. Yeah, so, returns nil here, and you can reply, you can set a third default argument. So in that case, we're doing plus one to one, and one is our default, which is why it's returning one. So, okay, takeaways, yeah, symbols are functions, just like keywords, um, but if you want to use them, you would generally want to use them with some type of collection lookup, so be careful what you're using them for. Well, that was, that was quite good, uh, but I'm going to <laughs> surprise you with this one. Right. Okay, okay. I'm seeing we're sorting two lists. Uh, both lists, or uh, vectors, have the same elements in them, just slightly different order. And I would say that sort should be deterministic in that way, and we should get equal things from equal lists. Let's look at some options. <laughs> Throws arithmetic exception. Hmm. Okay, maybe, the, Renzo, can you just remind me what a NAN is, perhaps? Oh, I, yeah. That doesn't, so, doesn't no, you're, sound you're right. like a number. Yeah, we, so. we just throw it in. So that is uh, like a, a static method on a Java class that is giving you the not a number entity. So this uh, ethereal thing. And uh, um, yeah, it's basically the result, usually in floating point arithmetic, of odd things like you dividing a float by zero. Or maybe a most common case, if, is you, if you do the square root of a negative number, it's going to give you none as a result. Mm. OK, so we're, we're dealing with an odd number there. Uh, so possibly, I could see there's a, some sort of exception thrown. False, the collections are ordered differently. Um, OK, and true, the collections have the same order. So I would have thought three, uh, and then four, nan, not a number. I think it's going to either be three or one. I think one is the tricky one. Well, so that's the default. So I, I, always do, I always go with the default. So I'm going three. Shall we ask for some help? And see? Yeah. All right. So who is going for number one, throw, throws exception? 
a couple and a, guy, nice. a few more there. Uh, who's going for number two? Oof. They are different. <laughs> uh, a good half. Uh, who's going for number three? True. So collection are the same. And who's going for number four? So he's returning not a number. <laughs> well, good, good, good. So, okay. The I correct know. answer <laughs> is. Oh, yeah. The crowd has it, I think. Crowd, yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. Almost there. So. So can someone tell us why that happens? Yeah, true, true. Someone wants to give it. Oh. Close. Yeah, it, it's it's true. We'll get a T-shirt for for playing. Right. Yeah, that's the. <laughs> oh. Okay. Yeah. True. So yeah, it's close. It's close. Um, uh, do, do, and anyone wants to? Uh, I'm saying is correct, uh, but uh, I just want to, like, point out that if we put the double the none in another position it's going to sort it correctly. So uh, you, you cannot know that if you don't work with like floating point arithmetics. Um, is somebody, somebody else that, do you want to try to give an answer? Yeah, yeah go ahead, sorry. It's again close. There's, <laughs> yeah. Well, let, let's go through the solution. So, oh, oh, no. we we really want. We, we have somebody else. Is actually true. <laughs> well, let's let's go through the answers. So uh, Java is right here. Closure is also right, I think. So both of them are right. Let's, let's have a look what happens here. So that's the first. Um, so NaN is special. When you, have, when you have floating point arithmetic, you need to take care of that somehow. So for example, when you use it as, uh, in the compare function that is returning minus 1, 0, or 1, depending if it's greater, less, or equal, it's always comparing the same to itself or any other number, so always zero, minus one, one, is always the same. So that is tricking sorting algorithms to start with. So what happens next? It happens that when you look at the sort implementation uh, in Clojure, is going to do the usual thing, or the normal thing, is delegating down to a Java uh, class, a method that is doing that kind of thing. But there are many options on that arrays, Java util arrays sort, one of them is I'm passing in an object array, which is what Clojure is using, because it doesn't know what types are coming through. Problem is that that object array, and you can see here an example, if you use it directly, is not cap capable of ordering with a NaN in between. But Java has another uh, method uh, over override for that, overload, overlight. Uh, we double with an array of doubles, and when you use that, the array of doubles version is going to take all the nans apart, put them on a, on a side, sort the thing, and put them back at the end, which is the correct behavior to have in this case. You put them away on a side, and they come back in. So if you try to use that, you will see that it's working correctly. So I think there, there's no mistake, it's just a simplification of the most common use case that is not working in this specific case. And as a Struck bonus, it Java fails again. the same in CLJS. 
So I suppose JavaScript is having sort of the same problem here. But I didn't investigate that. So takeaways. <laughs> Beware of the nun. The nun is bad. Uh, if you're like if you're doing any floating points, arithmetic, matrices, or so, so sort of things, um, you you need to take into account that you might encounter a nan in there, mm -hmm. and not just the comparator is going wrong with that. Or also other operations are having odd behaviors. And if, if you know that, and if you know that closure is not using the correct overload of the, the Java class, you can use interop to call the actual thing, to call the best thing for the job. Oh, good one. I'm seeing a theme here with the underlying uh, JVM. Uh, OK, I've got one, another one uh, for you, uh, Renzo. So, right. Have a go at this. Identical. OK. Um, so let block, defining a couple of local bindings, got x equals to 1,000, and we have y equals to x. Are they identical? Um, I would guess so. Yeah, let's we'll see some options. Um, number one, the call never returns. <laughs> uh, Who I'm knows? not sure why it could be that. Uh, number two, true, they are indeed identical. OK, I might be tempted by that. False, they are not identical. Uh, OK, but why? Um, throws an exception. You've got to put it in there, right? Oh, yeah, you, you need to throw. <laughs> Sometimes it throws, right? Um, so I would probably go for the obvious, sorry, but uh, I mean, are they identical? I think they are. Yeah, that's a good call. Let's, uh, let's see what the audience thinks. Uh, who thinks number one? Never returns. Yeah. <laughs> Could be the curveball we're throwing. The, bra the brave. Uh, <laughs> two, the obvious one. They are identical. Yeah, a few oh. people. Identical. Three, false, they're not identical. These things are not identical. OK. OK, right. And four, throws an exception. Yeah, good. OK. Uh, right, OK, let's see the answer. Uh, wisdom of the crowd again. Three, false. These things are yeah, not false. identical. Now I want to see now, if somebody can give me the explanation. Yeah, of that. who wants to have a go at this? Yes. OK. Thanks for that's, trying. Yeah, it's, uh, that's a, a good attempt. Uh, good attempt? Uh, well, <laughs> almost there. But no, there's no vars. Does uh, anyone else want to uh, have another go? Yeah, sure. It's the signing. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> no, no, yeah, go for it. Oh, at the back. Yeah, yeah. Okay, Which is yeah, correct. So it's about the identity, not the value. Yeah. Correct. And that, that is why they are yeah, definitely false in this case. They are different objects. T-shirt? T-shirt, yes. <laughs> That's uh... Can the lecture line? We'll, we'll, we'll pass it down the line. Sure. We play a lot of rugby in Australia. So. Um, you decide. Uh, uh, sure. Uh, yeah, one more. Uh, we'll go this side of the room. Sorry, we, we did two. Does someone else want to have a go? Sure. Um, I think that both two bindings combined, the third one is uh, the thousand objects, and then why is another binding? So there are two different bindings, and therefore they're not identical? Yeah, I think uh, that's t-shirt worthy. <laughs> but maybe we will, uh, maybe we'll go see the, uh, see the answer. Let's, uh, oop, here you go. Oh. <laughs> okay, keep our okay, let's uh, we'll save some t-shirts for the final question. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So we could keep going all day on this. So okay, yeah. What is what is identical? Uh, so let's break this down and look at the bytecode that's generated for identical, and we can see that it goes back to object. So basically, we're comparing objects uh, at this point. Uh, so the, the let block is actually retaining the primitiveness of the bindings during the compilation. So what, yeah, what Clojure is seeing there is seeing 1,000 and 1,000, and are those identical? 
So, because we're working with objects, Java needs to auto-unbox these. So, what's equivalently happening there is long value of 1,000, which is equivalent to long new object creation with 1,000. So, therefore, they're different objects. Now, hang on. Before we go, we're not going to have enough t-shirts for this, but uh, there's, a, there's a little bonus here. So, we can see here, because it's doing value of 1,000, we're creating a new object. What do you think would happen if we were saying identical 100, 100? Sure. True. And does, does anyone, so what? Yeah, exactly. So, uh, we'll try and get a t-shirt for you. That was great. So again, uh, <laughs> we threw out too many. Uh, so yeah, this is another quirk from the underlying Java. So, Java actually caches numbers between the range of uh, plus and minus 127. So when you get this back, you're actually getting the same object back. So, so yeah. it will work, and, uh, will work if you use less than 127 and more than minus 127. Again, uh, another little bonus there. Actually, is true in ClojureScript. You got it right. So yeah, the takeaway, of course, Java is built, uh, Clojure is built on Java. So. There's a lot of quirks in there from the underlying platform. Uh, but what's much better if you want to compare numbers is to use the double equals operator uh, if you want consistent results. Got a question or comment? Is there an overload in primitives in Python? Uh, so, it will. So, you're saying if you, if you, so. It, they are already typed as primitives. Right? You, you don't need to type them again because the, the compiler already knows in a let block and loops as well that uh, if it's a long, it will retain the long. So you don't need to actually say this is a long or is a double because the compiler knows in a let block what that is. Of, of, sorry, of course, depending if you're using a literal number, if you pass it in through a function, then you need to make the type uh, the type annotation. So it, it won't change. It won't change. Uh, the problem is, so there are two problems here. One is the one we explained, which is quite uh, elaborated and difficult, but using identical for numbers, that should be the thing that you're never going to do. So it doesn't really make sense. 99% of the cases. So use double equal. And no problems. <laughs> All, All right. right. Lucky last. All right, so <laughs> I'm going to show you this one. Is it your turn or my turn? Uh, yeah, I'll guess. I'll okay. have a go. Uh, all right, this one, yeah, the biggest bit of code we've seen so far. Okay, so you'd, we're defining a function A, takes one argument, and it's incrementing the number. We're then adding that function into a vector called myfns. We are then redefining the function uh, A, uh, and we're timesing that by 100, and then we're fetching the function out of our list and applying one to it. Yeah. Oh. All right, show me some options. Uh, the number two, uh, which I guess would make sense if um, we use the first function, right, but we're redefining the function, which is odd. Okay, what's 200? So that's, okay, so that's the case where we would redefine A. Um, actually, no, that's like, a, that's like a combination of the two functions. We're incrementing and that's odd, okay. Um, the number 100, okay, that's just the, that feels like the default. Um, you might be trying to trick me, I don't know. Uh, and the last one is another combination of the two functions but in flipped reverse. Uh, hmm, odd that you put two combinations in there of functions. Uh, if I had to go 50-50, I would go, I'm going to stick with, um, I think, three. I think we've redefined A. Let's, let's, let's go with that. Yeah, let's see what the audience think. What do you think? So it's uh, number two, so basically it's not doing anything. Uh, yeah, yeah, they're coming gradually. <laughs> Um, number two, so it's returning the number 200, so it's kind of composing the two. Mm -hmm. 
Nobody. No. Uh, number three, the number 100. So we are redefining yeah. something here that is coming through. So we've got, yeah, I think less than the other. And uh, number four, the number 101. Got one the corner here, another one there. Okay. So what's the answer, Renzo? Come the on. right answer is the number two, which means okay. is not redefining All it. Right. So anyone so, uh, wants to try to explain what's happening there? But I think the guy with, like, at the back it was the, one, the first one raising a hand. Yep, I think that's bang on. Well done. Sorry. <laughs> well, we can throw a couple of additional puzzles yep. in. Like made on the spot. Maybe some of you has one. It'll be nice. Who, uh, do you want to go with the answer? And I'll yeah. just randomly throw out a few. <laughs> All right, think, so, uh, yeah, but basically what, uh, what was said. So um, when, you define a, when you define the VAR, uh, sure A, um, okay, so that is already defined. When we go inside the vector to look what's inside the vector, we print it, is, uh, we do first of my offense, and it returns like an object signature. So that is the printing of an object, uh, which usually is what a function gets compiled down to enclosure. So this is what we expect. And then we redefine A. So we put something else in A. So the variable A is now pointing at something else. And when we do string of A to see what's inside, we get another object signature, which is different from the first one. So we know that what is now A pointing at is a specific function with some object signature. But what happens to our first function that was in the vector? Well, basically nothing. So there's one important takeaway, which is, well, two important takeaways. One, like a var is working like a pointer, so you can ref them, and you can make them point at something different. And they're not, they're gonna change what they point to, but what is being pointed at is not necessarily changing. And more, probably the most important thing, when you use them, when you use the name of a var in a REPL or in your closure program, there is an auto dereffing going on. So you're not actually using the var, you're using what the var is pointing at, which is happening automatically for you, so you don't need to do any at or things like that in the code. And that is what's happening when you create the vector, putting the A in it, what is getting the vector is the uh, compile down a function that is not changing anymore. So you're maintaining the reference cannot garbage collect it. So when you go back, you invoke it and it will work, but it's not changing. Well, that's it. That was well, you've, you've survived to the awesome. end of the day. Well done. We got a few resources. Some are shameless plugs, um, but they are really explaining these kind of things. Uh, one is uh, the closure standard library book which is a work in progress, seven chapters in, and uh, I, like... I can do this shameless plug for you if you like, Renzo. Renzo is the brains behind this talk, and he's, uh, he's writing this uh, Manning book, Closure Standard Library, so uh, yeah, it's uh, all, the, all the deep closure knowledge comes and, from uh, Renzo. Yeah, we got a nice discount here, 42% uh, of, of the book cover. And uh, uh, the Closure Pill screencast is something that I started doing recently, and it contains some of these things into like smaller pills and in a screencast form. And uh, for anything else that we do as U Switch, just that is not necessarily closure, but most, there's a lot of closure going on. The labs, uh, it's our blog. Now, it was recently redesigned, it's uh, shiny new, and it's got a load of articles coming through. And thanks, everyone. Cool. Thank you. Okay.